Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get a look ahead at what could be a busy start to the hurricane season. Now, forecasting the weather past four to five days, that in itself is difficult. So when you look far ahead, again, this just kind of gives us a feel of what we could see. But I want to show you what I'm, I'm uh, kind of projecting as we get into May, June, July, as we work our way into the hurricane season. Hurricane season itself starts June 1st. Things get very active, of course, as we get into July, more so August, September, and October. October. The peak of the hurricane season is September 10th. So September, usually the most active as far as named storms go. Now, right now it's been well advertised. We're in an El Nino pattern. I'm not going to necessarily dive into the science behind that, but in an El Nino pattern, sometimes it's a little quieter in the Atlantic Basin. That wasn't the case this past season though, because there's other variables. It's not just El Nino, El Nino and La Nina. But with that said, the next couple months, we're going to be locked in this red shading here, February, March, April, to an El Nino. But it's going to quickly transition to a La Nina as we work our way into June, July, August, and then after that. I bring that up because with a La Nina, it is usually more active in the Atlantic Basin. But this doesn't tell us where storms are going to go, where hurricanes are going to go. So I'll track it island by island for you as we get into the hurricane season. So with that said, I want to look ahead. This map here is showing May. So this is the month of May. So a couple months out, the month before the start of the hurricane season. Here we are in the Caribbean, U.S., my friends in Canada right here. Here's Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Africa. These are the open waters of the Atlantic. So the green you're seeing on the map, that's increased moisture. It's saying, hey, there's going to be a lot of moisture in here. And that is an ingredient for storms to form, obviously, the, the moisture. So uh, that's a little bit problematic, seeing that we're going to have above average moisture here. And especially as we get into June and transition into a La Nina, La Nina gives us more instability. So shower and storms have a better chance of bubbling up and then eventually spinning and developing into tropical storms and hurricanes. So here's the June moisture outlook. Look at that surge of moisture, even creeping into the Gulf of Mexico, back through the Caribbean. There's going to be a lot of extra moisture around. Again, it doesn't mean we're going to see a huge hurricane develop, but it does increase the chances of tropical development when you see something like this transitioning into a La Nina and we're going to have a lot of moisture. No idea even if we do have a hurricanes where they're going to go. Obviously at this uh, point you need to wait for them to develop to see where they're going to go but this does uh, tell me that I do believe we're going to have a busy start to the season because look at this. This extra moisture here really does coincide to where we typically look early in the hurricane season. This is our June development map. This is where things often form in the month of June, and it's usually closer to home, parts of the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, east coast of the U.S., because we still have fronts early in the season, and sometimes you can see things spinning up. So the fact we're going to have a lot of extra moisture in here, and it's a spot we usually look for development, does tell me that we could have some early season tropical storms, even preseason storms. That happens sometimes. The month of May could actually be a little more active than average. So kind of giving you the heads up that I'm watching it for you. Now, as we get into the upcoming season, here's the list of names. Now, different basins have different names. The Pacific Ocean, Eastern Pacific, for example, has a totally different list. But in the Atlantic Basin, which includes the Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean, and the first name on the list is Alberto, Beryl after that, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, and Gordon, and then we get down the list, and hopefully we don't get too far down the list, but either way, we'll wait and see where these hurricanes, where these tropical storms will eventually go. Now, this time of year, we're tracking those fronts. We've got another one moving across the U.S. that will bring changes into the upcoming week. We've also been dealing with some of that dust around, especially in the southeastern Caribbean. Thinking of you, if you've had some of those uh, breathing problems with could have additional breathing issues the next few days air quality a little bit lower in the uh, Southern Caribbean. But there's that next front as we work our way through the weekend. This is later today. Across the Caribbean, I'll dive down in just a second, but I want to show you kind of the broad picture because what happens here impacts what happens down here. And you see by Sunday afternoon, this front taking shape, dipping down into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this will start to wind up. It'll start to spin more, become stronger. And you see it here as we work our way into Monday. This is the storm gathering southeast U.S. We'll see some rain and storms around tail end of the front dipping all the way down 
toward the Yucatan Peninsula at least. And then Monday into Tuesday, this one is going to race up toward New England, Northeast U.S., and the Atlantic region of Canada that got hit so hard by some historic uh, snows, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia. There's going to be another chance of rain as we work our way later into Tuesday, Tuesday night, and Wednesday. So you can see this big system spinning uh, off the coast or near the coast, and there's the tail end of it dipping down through the Bahamas, through the Caribbean. That'll change the winds. I want to show you the winds in a second. Now, for today, just to give you that closer look, spotty passing shower. That's really going to be the rule, watching out for some of the dust, both today and as we work our way into Sunday, the easterly flow with us. So again, some hit or miss showers just kind of depends on where some of those set up. But as we work our way into early next week, that front I was just showing you up to the north, you see it here, starts to work its way in, starting to move toward uh, Florida. This is by the time we get into Monday afternoon, spotty showers getting closer to the Cayman Islands, Cuba, parts of Mexico, Belize, even Guatemala. Honduras, we could see a few showers. You see right there, this is by the time we get into Tuesday, there's that front that starts to move in and it will shift those winds. So let me show you the winds here. Now we have that strong easterly flow, high pressure and control over toward Bermuda. That means some nice weather. I'll show you that in a second with the forecast. Winds around that are clockwise. So we have that easterly flow, which is kind of strong at times back through the Caribbean, helping to drive some dust around. As we work our way into our Sunday, easterly flow in the Caribbean, more out of the south in the Gulf. That's because we have our next front approaching, which is sitting here, and look what happens. As this next front moves in, we get that surge of winds and they're going to be quite strong coming out of the northwest right there. We could have some gale warnings up for parts of the Gulf of Mexico as we work our way into Monday. That's the next front bringing that northerly flow down through parts of Mexico. And then as we go from Monday and Tuesday, and this front moves in. There's that northerly breeze right there stretching back toward parts of Cuba, down through Belize and Honduras. And again, gusty winds. We're going to see those dangerous seas once again in the open waters of the Atlantic. So Jamaica, not much more than a passing shower. Same thing in the Cayman Islands as we go through the weekend, 10 to 20% chance. We work our way to Trinidad and Tobago, watching out for some dust around. And we'll continue to see that even up toward Barbados. Rain chance could see a passing shower. A couple passing showers possible in St. Lucia. Slightly higher chance for us in St. Lucia today and tomorrow. Not a washout, but there'll be a few around. Grenada, 20% chance, and some spotty showers possible. St. Vincent and the Grenadines over the next couple of days. Rain chance about 30% in Martinique, and we're looking at about a 30% chance in the next couple days in Dominica. Could be a little higher on Monday. We work our way into Guadeloupe, 30 to 40% chance. Again, isolated passing showers. Antigua and Barbuda, 20 to 30% chance, and a 20 to 30% chance this weekend. St. Kitts and Nevis, and Montserrat. Rain chance holding at a minimal 10 to 20% chance Anguilla and St. Bart's and keeping at an even 20% chance St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. Only a 10% chance mainly dry in Puerto Rico. Uh, U.S. and British Virgin Islands rain chance stays limited 20% chance by Monday and as we work our way through the Dominican Republic back into Haiti mainly dry conditions. It would be a stray shower at best. Rain chance very low. Rain chance stays low the next couple days through the Bahamas, and that does include Turks and Caicos. Rain chance, 5 10% tops. As we work our way into Cuba, rain chance is small. It'll grow a little bit early next week with that next front moving in. Same thing in Belize. We'll see the rain chance bump up early next week and even over toward the Yucatan as that front moves in Monday into Tuesday. Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire. Now, we have that easterly breeze that's been with us, so a few showers will be possible. Keep me posted in the comments. Bermuda, I mentioned high pressure and control. So we're going to be on the uh, dry side. Costa Rica, Panama, rain chance about 20 to 30%. A 30% chance this weekend in Guyana and a 20 to 30% chance in Suriname. And as we swing back toward Venezuela, spotty shower will be uh, possible. So again, lots to watch, watching the dust out there, watching the long-term outlook uh, for uh, the potential of an active start to the hurricane season. Hurricane season starts June 1st. That front moving into the U.S. that will clip by the Caribbean and, of course, I'll be monitoring the earthquake. So thank you for joining uh, this uh, channel, being part of this channel and subscribing. Thank you for being with me, and I hope you have a great weekend ahead.